Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net. In the video today, the top 10 awesome movie plots and ideas that seem stupid in retrospect. Movies are a window to another world. 90 minutes for us viewers to switch off our brains and be entertained. However, when you take a closer look at some movies, the actions of the characters seem downright stupid, especially when there are obvious and much better options available to them. For example, 10 of the things we're looking at in today's video. Number 10. Jurassic Park. Why clone any dangerous dinosaurs at all? Jurassic Park is easily one of the greatest films of all time. Its CGI, despite being 25 years old, is still some of the best ever seen. The basic premise of the film is that John Hammond wants to create a live dinosaur-themed amusement park, and things go really bad really fast when all of the dangerous dinosaurs escape. But here is the thing. Why were any dangerous dinosaurs cloned at all? They'd figured out how to clone freaking dinosaurs. They'd figured out how to slap God square in the mouth and bring to life things that haven't walked the face of the planet for over 65 Five million years. Surely Hammond could have just filled the park with Triceratopses and Stegosauri or any other number of gentle plant-eating dinosaurs and people would have still visited. And look, if anyone had complained that there was a lack of Velociraptors or T-Rexes or whatever, Hammond could have just laughed them off and told them to go make their own live dinosaur theme amusement park. Number 9. Demolition Man. Why not revive John Spartan instead? Demolition Man is set in a universe where virtually all crime has been eliminated. The new head on show of this utopia is Dr. Raymond Cocteau, who, in his infinite wisdom, revives Wesley Snipes, a sociopathic maniac, and brainwashes him into doing his bidding. Sure, it turns out that the doctor is a douche who wants to control the entire world, but he's also shown to be a genius. So why did he choose to revive Wesley Snipes when Sylvester Stallone, a highly decorated police officer, was housed in the same prison and was presumably just as susceptible to brainwashing. Instead of waking up Stallone and giving him his job back, he revives the most dangerous criminal of all time and trains him how to stab a man in the kidneys with a fountain pen. This causes the police to revive Stallone anyway, so all the doctor did was leave the most delicious piece of cake on the counter for someone else to eat, while he feasted on the part of the cake with a knife still inside. Number 8. Star Wars 2. Why doesn't Yoda use the Force Push? The 900-year-old diminutive green dispenser of wisdom, aka Master Yoda, spends most of the latter half of the trilogy telling people to chill. In Star Wars Episode II, however, he tries to eviscerate Saruman using approximately all of the backflips. Because apparently Yoda is a deep, complex character who loves to backflip. However, just as Yoda gets the upper hand, Count Dooku knocks over a pillar which threatens to kill Obi-Wan Kenobi. This forces Yoda to abandon the fight to stop the pillar from crushing Obi-Wan, which he does by slowly levitating it out of the way. By doing this, he completely neglects to use either force push or pull, aka the most basic force abilities around. As Yoda himself says, the size and weight of an object is only relevant in the mind of the practitioner. Yoda is one of the most powerful force users ever, so why doesn't he choose to simply float the pillar away instead of forcefully knocking it back with a blast of his mind magic so he could, you know, stop one of the most evil men in the universe from getting away. Number 7. Equilibrium. Why do they not search the man who knows Kung Fu for guns before they interrogate him? In Equilibrium, Christian Bale plays the role of a cleric, a future peacekeeper trained in the ancient art of gun guitar. Through analysis of thousands of recorded gunfights, the cleric has determined that the geometric distribution of antagonists in any gun battle is a statistically predictable element. Basically, if Christian Bale has a gun, the odds of your testicles being shot is increased by about 80%. So why the hell did no one check him for a gun when they decided to interrogate him? Bale, using his years of experience and those guns he just happened to be hiding, is able to easily kill, well, everybody. Number 6. Hancock. Why did the woman who knows Hancock is weaker when she's nearby visit him when he was dying? Hancock is an awesome film, providing you stop watching it at around the halfway mark. In the latter half of the film, it's revealed that when the titular superhero of the film is near Charlie's Theron's character, he gets gradually weaker and more human. This culminates in Hancock being shot and almost killed. When Mary, Theron's character, hears about this, instead of climbing in a car and driving as far away as possible from Hancock, she visits him in hospital and stands right next to him. This slowly saps him of what was left of his superpowers and almost kills him, herself, and her boyfriend in the process. 
And all we can say to that is smooth, Neri. Smooth. Number 5. The Matrix. Why did Trinity warn the agent that she was going to shoot? In the first Matrix film, it's noted that the agents are essentially unkillable beings of death. Fighting one is like trying to stop a metal fan with your testicles. Even if you do manage to stop it, you're going to come off much worse for wear. So when Trinity manages to sneak up on one feat that is, up to that point, deemed virtually impossible, she calmly and slowly says the words, Dodge this. Unbelievably stupid, Carrie Ann Moss presumably had to retake her SATs after filming the scene. The agents are shown to be able to move faster than bullets, and the one that Trinity shoots has a full two seconds to react and simply doesn't. How one of these agents forgets that they can move at 300 miles per hour at the drop of a hat is beyond us. I mean, if I had that superpower, I would certainly never forget it. Number 4. Source Code Why doesn't Jake Gyllenhaal realize the bomber got off the train? Source Code is a film in which Jake Gyllenhaal has to try and stop a bombing by reliving the last eight minutes of another person's life. Basically, the train has a bomb on it, and the person who planted it also planted another. It's Gyllenhaal's mission to find this man so he can report it to the people sending him back in time. It doesn't occur to Gyllenhaal until around halfway through the film that for the bomber to have warned people about another bomb, he would have gotten off the train. It isn't until around his 17th try that Gyllenhaal actually decided to follow somebody off the train and hence discovers the bomber's identity. Essentially, he wasted precious minutes that could have been spent preparing for and reducing the threat of collateral damage. Number 3. In Time Why didn't Justin Timberlake use any of the time he stole? In Time is a high-concept film in which all money is replaced by time. Everyone stops aging at 25, and from that moment on, you can live forever, providing you can earn the time to do so. In the film, Justin Timberlake steals a million years' worth of time from corporate fat cats and tries to redistribute it among the poor. However, for reasons that are never explained, he neglects to take any of this time for himself. You could say he was being honorable by not using it, much like how Robin Hood never kept any of the prince's money for himself. However, a lot of the film's drama comes from the fact that Timberlake is always running low on time. There was no reason why he couldn't have taken a couple of days for himself, so he didn't die before he was able to share the rest with the starving poor people. Number 2. Karate Kid Why did Daniel San use the crane kick? The Karate Kid is the underdog story of a young man who is taught karate by an elderly handyman in an age before such people were put on lists and reported to the police. Mr. Miyagi teaches the film's protagonist, Daniel, the crane kick, which he claims is able to stop any opponent if done correctly. Now that's all well and good, except for the crane kick relies on the user kicking their opponent square in the face, something that is explicitly banned in the tournament that Daniel takes part in at the end of the film. The fact that Daniel is stupid enough to even think of using it is only matched by the stupidity of the referee, who doesn't immediately disqualify him for using it and simply lets it slide. Apparently, you're allowed to openly break the rules in the Karate Kid universe as long as you do so awesomely. Number 1. Pulp Fiction Why Does Marcellus Wallace Buy His Own Groceries? Pulp Fiction is arguably one of Tarantino's best films. One scene in particular involves one of the film's main antagonists, Marcellus Wallace, being hit by a car driven by Bruce Willis. When he's hit by the car, he is carrying a large box of donuts. Why Hollywood felt the need to keep making films after a moment this perfect is a bit of a mystery. After being hit by the car, Wallace and Willis fight and end up being prisoners of a perverted pawn shop owner. Now, all of this would have been avoided if Marcellus Wallace sent one of the many men he has at his disposal to fetch his donuts donuts for him. I mean, come on, Wallace, how do you expect to convince people you're a powerful crime kingpin when you still have to go out and buy your own snacks? So I really hope you enjoyed that video, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got another channel, it's called Biographics. It's biographies of notable people from the present day, as well as history from Elon Musk to Osama bin Laden. You can check it out through the icon on the screen now. But if you want something else to watch right now, why not check out another Top 10s video or a Biographics video over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.